So I'm going to apologize right now for covering this topic yet again, but I feel like after I brought some initial attention to it on this channel that I should probably cover the seeming conclusion of the Nick Robinson situation with Polygon and sexual harassment. Now, to clarify, when I made that initial video, there had been no evidence released publicly. And all there have been is several accusations as Polygon opened up an internal investigation. Now, at no time was Nick Robinson uh, under any legal pressure. There was no, uh, even while a lawyer might advise him to stop talking, he did not necessarily, you know, have anybody going after him legally. No one was going after him for assault. And I think there's a big thing we have to separate between assault and harassment. And even when harassment is present, that doesn't always mean there's a legal charge involved. Uh, oftentimes, if the harassment isn't continuous, there really isn't much of a legal case to make. And I'm guessing, at least from what we have heard, that any harassment that Nick Robinson may have done uh, was immediately stopped once it became clear the person did not like it. Now, I do apologize for maybe making that video probably you know a handful of hours too soon because evidence did come out, and I'll show it up on the screen again here, uh, where someone did you know post some messages they had with Nick about uh, a T-shirt that this person happened to like on his Twitter account, and he messaged her and tried to um, get her to send nude pictures. And... That's just inappropriate on so many levels. And this is inappropriate regardless of if this person was a well-known media member or not. It's just an inappropriate thing to do, especially to a stranger, even more so to someone who was just following you on Twitter, uh, has no association with you, doesn't know you personally, uh, you've never met in person. You, it, it's, it's just inappropriate unless that person uh, was obviously you know, leaning that way. If there was flirting back and forth and this person uh, made it obvious that they want to advance it to the next level. And yes, I know all about cybering and, you know, people sending nudes back in the day. I'm not going to lie. When I was like, I don't even know, 10, I, I was on those AOL chat rooms, um, Yahoo Messenger chat rooms. Uh, I was in a whole bunch of chat rooms when I was a kid and I admit to asking people for nudes. And, uh, before I really even knew what nudes meant. I mean, I knew, obviously knew it was naked pictures, but I didn't really know the sexual innuendo behind it. Um, I just saw other people doing it, so I was like, okay, cool, I'll do it too. Never got any, but, I mean, that's that's okay. Um, I was 10. I mean, let's be real. And as I grew up, I, I, I'd like to think I matured, and I realized that that kind of thing is just not appropriate. Uh, even if I'm flirting with someone, it's not appropriate to jump to the sending nudes or asking them to come, you know, suck me off, or whatever the case may be. And this video is even harder for me to make right now, because just two days ago, I launched Prime Family, which is a series I'm doing with my kids, uh, and maybe even my fiance, where uh, we explore Nintendo games, and I bring them into the Nintendo family, and uh, introduce them, and hopefully, in my mind, raise them right when it comes to video game culture, because... It's easy to get sucked up into the wrong parts of video game culture, and that does not mean someday my kids can't play Call of Duty or Assassin's Creed or Shadow of Mordor or any of those games out there that have more serious adult themes, but I'd like them to grow up and mature and understand the differences uh, between the different types of games and obviously reality versus pretend. Uh, and my daughter herself actually gets really emotional even when... Uh, <laughs> In that big giant movie, uh, when the giant robot flies up in the sky to get hit by the nuclear bomb and gets blown up, she cries every single time because she's attached to that character, and I, I don't want her to experience themes like that in a video game, which might be even more personal for her since she's bringing that person on the adventure um, until she's ready. So it feels weird talking about this in, you know, in that light, but Nick Robinson finally responded publicly. So here, here's what he said in a Twitter status. He, you know, made an image with a bunch of text. And he goes on to essentially say this. I messed up, and I owe you an explanation. Over nine years on this website, I've used it for every aspect of my life, making friends, finding jobs, and yes, embarrassingly flirting. This means I have, on many occasions, used Twitter to hit on people. That's embarrassing enough on its own. It's now clear that some of these advances were unwanted or handled very poorly. But there's another significant issue. While my platform and my responsibilities grew, I failed to grow alongside them. 
Over the past couple of years, I kept on using Twitter the same way I always have, including sliding into DMs, a move that carries on entirely different weight when you're a private individual versus when you're a public one. Not that long ago, I had an extremely small following online. I never imagined I'd someday be getting messages from people about how the silly stuff I made has pulled them out of a dark place or affected them positively. I certainly never imagined there'd be fan art with my dumb face on it. All that to say this, I'm now, as weird as it sounds, in a position of power. But I'm ashamed to admit that until the past few days, I hadn't appreciated the responsibility that brings. I'll admit that when this conversation first started, I was defensive and confused. I've always tried to be thoughtful, considerate person when it comes to this stuff, and I couldn't understand what was going on. But the more I thought about it, the more I understood where people were coming from. I believe that when someone says you've hurt them or made them uncomfortable, the right thing to do is not to argue, it's to listen. What I always thought of as flirting can quickly become something more insidious when one of the people is in a position of power. I totally failed to recognize this. I spent the past week doing little besides reflecting on my own behavior. I'm embarrassed, obviously, but more than embarrassed, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to anyone I have ever made uncomfortable with my advances, and I'm sorry for disappointing fans of mine who rightfully expected better from me. I know I've let you down, and I know it falls on me to earn back your trust by changing my behavior going forward. That's exactly what I intend to do. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's funny when someone says, you know, he left Polygon. Uh, that's not happened. Uh, Chris Grant from Polygon posted on Twitter, as an update, we're parting ways with Nick Robinson, effective immediately. And I wish him the best. Uh, so <laughs> Nick Robinson, uh, when, when you hear that effective immediately, that essentially means he was fired. And without making those fire word publics, maybe he, maybe he can still use Polygon, maybe as a reference for a job. I don't know. But uh, he was pushed out the door. He was let go. Uh, and that's really the only move Polygon had to make. When they went through their own investigation, they obviously uncovered some stuff. There's a lot of people saying they know things. I have heard some things i've seen some dms that have been sent to me i am not going to share them with you guys because uh i was not given permission to share them publicly so uh, it's not something that i feel as some of these things are very personal it's not on me to you know bring some of that evidence forward but as i said there, there's the one where someone did post it publicly saying send nudes so my take, I guess, with this whole thing seemingly wrapping up, and, and Nick's going to move on and do whatever. He's going to run a Patreon or have a YouTube channel or get hired on somewhere else doing something. I don't know. Uh, it's very clear he has a very strong following, and they're going to follow him wherever he goes, and he's he's going to find future success in his life. You know, I know a lot of people said, said in the last video, oh, I'm tanking his career. I'm not tanking his career. For starters, I'm not even close to the biggest person to point this out. There were several other bigger YouTubers, several other places that reported on this that were significantly bigger than me with millions upon millions upon millions of followers. So my impact on Nick's life personally is next to nothing. But Nick is going to land on his feet, and I know that. But it's important to remember that this, for, for better or worse, this apology encapsulizes who Nick is. And while at first read it might sound like a, a genuine apology, I think what he's mostly sorry for is that anybody found out. Because if you if you read through it, there's a lot of self-appreciation, um, I guess, in his in his apology, you know, he admits he's in a position of power. Uh, he said that, you know, what he did wasn't wrong when he wasn't, but it is now. I'm like, it's wrong, period. It's not just if you're in a position of power. It's wrong, period, to ask people for nude pictures, um, especially if you don't know them. Uh, it, it's wrong to do the type of flirting he was doing. And I know, I realize asking for nudes, asking people to suck you off, like these kind of things. Um, have been more commonly accepted in the United States and American culture, but that doesn't make it okay. Just because something's become more culturally accepted as normal doesn't mean that normal is really the way culture should be. Like if I was out at a beach, didn't know somebody, walked up to her and I'm like, hey, can you send me some nudes? Like I would get slapped, kicked to the balls, and maybe even complain to a cop about being a creep. And that's really what he was doing here. He was being a creep. Forget being a jerk. Forget being an asshole and all those other public comments he makes. Like, whatever. You're, you could be an asshole. But, like, he was being a creep. Uh, he didn't stalk anyone that we know of. Uh, after people made it clear that it this disgusted him, he, like, stopped talking to him. So, 
there wasn't a continual harassment here that would make people want to press a lawsuit, but uh, there's a pattern of behavior here and now a pattern of uh, this apology that, that really encapsulates who he is. And you might love Nick Robinson and think he's fine and go follow him after this video and dislike my channel and, and do what you need to do. Uh, do whatever you feel like you need to do. Uh, but it, it's tough reading this apology from the side of a victim, and there's been several of the the supposed victims, right? We don't have the evidence uh, that have come out and said that this this apology isn't really an apology to them at all. It's an apology to his fans that this whole situation even rose up, um, and the fact that he, you know, is writing off harassing us, flirting. I get it from his side of things because. Uh, there are men that think it's okay to flirt this way, to be extremely direct. I mean, you might as well just ask people to have sex with you without even knowing. Uh, so there's okay flirting, and then there's crossing the line flirting. And he really crossed the line into what several of the people he talked to are claiming is harassment. Uh, and then it's interesting just going through this you know he talks about how he's affected people's lives in a positive way and where people are drawing pictures of him. And it's like, okay. I understand being proud of how far you've come, right? Like, if my YouTube channel ever gets to 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to be extremely proud of what I accomplished, uh, of what we accomplished together, because that's a moment for me of knowing that, hey, look, I have done something that is obviously impacting people in a positive way. But when I'm working out an apology, if I do something terrible, like in this case, I might have jumped the gun with Nick Robinson a bit. It would be bad of me to spend the, you know, a majority of an apology talking about how awesome I am. And that's what he's doing here. All the positive impacts, you know, how he's become popular, how he's this, how he's that. Like half of this apology has nothing to do with him being sorry. And the only time he really apologizes at the end where he says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to anyone I've ever made uncomfortable with my advances, and I'm sorry for disappointing fans of mine. Like, forget about the fans of yours. It, it is the people that are, are claiming you harass them that, you know, it's not just uncomfortable, right? Like, like, harassment crosses a line. Now, again, this isn't a legal matter. You know, a lot of people say, oh, leave it alone until the courts find him guilty. No one's pressing charges. There's no charges being pressed here. Uh, it's just people making it known that he does embarrassing things. And Nick himself here is admitting that he does this. He does contact people on Twitter that he does not know uh, to what he calls flirt with them. And I'm sorry, that is inappropriate. I mean, you shouldn't be doing that with people you don't know. Now, if you get to know them and you've been talking for a while and there's some, you know, there's some tension there, some flirty tension, that's fine. But the flirts don't instantly advance to send nudes when you're talking about a t-shirt. It's his aggressive nature with it that I think presented the problem to so many of these women. And I know, oh, the crying foul, I'm an SJW, fine, whatever. I'm an SJW. I, I don't really care about labels. Labels are stupid because there's no way to generalize a massive group of people into one thing. Like, I'm a white American, and you know what? According to many people, that means that I'm part of this privileged group of people, and uh, I couldn't possibly have anything go bad for me, and I wouldn't know what it's like to have bad things happen. I wouldn't know what it's like to be homeless. I've been homeless, but I, apparently I wouldn't know what that's like. Uh, it's <laughs> it's just tough uh, when you generalize everyone into a specific group. So you can call me an SJW if that makes you feel better at the end of the day. Call me PC if you want. I don't even know that I'm being politically correct at all here, uh, because i Again, do I think Nick Robinson is the worst person in the world? No, I do not. Uh, do I think he makes entertaining content? Yes, I do. I think he has some very interesting opinions about video games, and I think he has a comedic value to him. And I think overall, as I said, he's going to land on his feet, and he's going to find something productive to do with his life. Uh, and he's got plenty of support and plenty of fans to do that. I mean, he's got way more followers and fans than I do, and I'm you know, making what, what I feel is at least a somewhat productive uh, path in my life with what I'd like to do, and he's got an even easier path to do that should he want to, based on his his history at bigger places. I mean, my history is Zelda Informer. He's a polygon, a giant bomb, and you know, these big, massive publications where he grew a following. And there are people, even in the industry, that, that don't seem okay with this apology. Uh, there was this person from Giant Bomb, I'll put up, put up a picture of the tweet, uh, that is not happy at all with this apology and, and has some inside information that they're not willing to reveal, of course. But this is a person who is reputable and works at Giant Bomb and is like, yeah, this apology is bunk. And at the end of the day, I don't know that Nick could have said much else. Because if he openly admitted 
publicly that he was sexually harassing people, uh, that opens up a whole swath of, of, of stuff. I mean, authorities could go after him even if charges are not pressed. You know, it, it's like me coming out and saying, hey, I raped someone. But you know, no one's claiming I raped them, but I said I raped someone. So that's going to make authorities, you know, come and knock on my door and arrest me and, and open an investigation to see, you know, what I did and, and try to figure it out. Uh, and the fact that I admit to it means I might be open to admit where it happened to who it happened to, blah, 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 blah. But, uh, yeah, he's not going to do that. So if you were hoping for him to come out and just lay it all out there, that's not. This is about... As much as I feel like this apology is more of a puff piece for himself to to try to win the loyalty of his fans back, uh, I think it's about all Nick could really do. I don't know that if I was in Nick Robinson's shoes, that if I'm trying to salvage my career and try to salvage my reputation, that you could really offer any better apology than what he did. And that doesn't mean that it's a good apology. For the victims, it's clearly not a good apology. But it gives you, it at least lets you know this is who he is, Okay. Like, we now know who Nick Robinson is. There's no pretending. There's no, you know, mask in front of him anymore. There's no shadow of a doubt. You read this apology. This is who Nick is. He pumps up himself. He cares about himself. He cares about, uh, you know, his popularity and his impact on people. He admits that's a good thing. It's good to care about how you impact people. Uh, there, there's some good qualities about Nick, but this piece is about all you need to know. No apologies really to the victims per se. No admitting he harassed them. He, you know, in fact, some of the victims are like, you're, you're saying, calling it flirting. Like that's an insult and that's fine. People are going to be insulted by things, but at least now we know who Nick is. So if you want to follow Nick, go ahead and follow him, whatever path he leads on. Uh, this will be the last time period ever whatsoever. We talk about Nick Robinson on this channel. Uh, I don't think... I think if there's a lesson to take away from this, it's that we all do embarrassing things. We all say stupid things. You know how many times just in the past month I've said something on this channel that wasn't 100% factually correct. It was based on assumptions or uh, based on uh, wrong information that I found. And that's fine. You can't believe everything you read on the internet. And you know mistakes happen. And I'm okay admitting to making those mistakes. And in this case, I admit to jumping the gun too soon on that video before I had that one piece of evidence. If I had that piece of evidence, then I have something strong to go on. I'm not going to eviscerate Nick. I don't think he's the worst guy in the world. I don't know uh, what, if anything, comes of this for him. But, uh, yeah, I mean, no, if nothing else, uh, we should take from this that you really shouldn't be using Twitter to flirt with people. You shouldn't be uh, using any social network to really flirt with strangers. Uh, you shouldn't be, you know, say you're a public head like me. You shouldn't be using your popularity to hook up with people, or, or I shouldn't say to hook up, but but to contact strangers and and flirt with them this aggressively. It, it is not something that uh, is okay, and I don't like what he did, and I'm not going to think it's okay, no matter what anybody tells me, but. Uh, Nick, I'm sorry that I called attention to it a little too soon. Uh, I thank you for at least making a public ad address about it besides just getting fired from Polygon. But uh, that's that's really, I think this is where the story is probably going to end uh, for Nick Robinson, at least for us here at Nintendo Prime. Unless he gets hired by Nintendo. <laughs> oh, boy. Then we have uh, a whole new video to make on that front. But I don't, I don't foresee that happening. With, with such a public thing happening, there's no way Nintendo would consider hiring him. Uh, but hey, Jose Otero from IGN got hired, so that, that, that was pretty cool. You know, that happened about a month or two ago. So, Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you dislike this video, hit that dislike button. I don't blame you. Uh, subscribe for more. And, folks, I will catch you in the next one.